The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, multi-generational religious community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free-thinking, spiritually questing individuals joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity, including diversity of beliefs and divine believers to humanists, from pagans to atheists and agnostics. And we believe in the compassion of the human heart, the warmth of community, the pursuit of justice, and the search for meaning in our lives. We gather with gratitude this morning on traditional Cree lands that are now part of Treaty 6 and shared by many nations. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to our children. Last weekend, I had the great honor of attending the annual Child Haven Dinner, hence the new tie, made in India, love it. And there, of course, we were blessed to be in the presence of Fred and Bonnie Cappuccino. Our opening words were actually spoken by Fred at that dinner. Glowing, glowing deep within each one of you is a divine spark. Though some of you may be skeptical or feel that you are unworthy, yet the divine spark glows there inside of you. Sometimes it is overlaid with self-interest. Sometimes it is encrusted with fear. Yet the divine spark illumines your soul. We may tend to deny it, knowing that we have done those things that we ought not to have done. Yet the divine spark never leaves you. This divine spark may surprise you as the future unfolds. It may lead you to risk much in some wild act of compassion. You are of infinite worth. You possess a dazzling beauty that is irresistible. Trust this divine spark glowing, glowing in your deepest being. I'd invite everyone now to join me in a shared reading that's printed in your order of service. It's a love affirmation. We affirm that love is our greatest purpose. Accepting one another is the truest form of faithful living. The search for truth is our constant star. We pledge our hearts, minds, and hands to challenge injustice with courage, to find hope in times of fear, and to live out our Unitarian Universalist values every day as a beloved community. Thus do we covenant with each other and with all that is sacred in life. So this reading is called It's Not Easy Being a UU by Charles Magistro. I'm amused by the view that it's easy to be a Unitarian Universalist. It's as easy to be a Unitarian Universalist as it is to be persistent, courageous, and curious. It's as easy to be a Unitarian Universalist as it is to search the murky waters of life without sure charts to guide us or any guarantee that we will find a safe port to put down anchor. It's as easy to be a Unitarian Universalist as it is to overcome the natural fear of the unknown and venture forth with nothing to sustain us save our zest for living and hunger for new experience and knowledge. Our way in religion is not the way of ease. We are called to be sailors, for many worlds exist waiting to be discovered, and not the least of these worlds are within ourselves. It takes as much persistence, courage, and curiosity to look into our own depths, to come to terms with the twin mysteries of being alive and having to die, to see ourselves in new and larger ways without being dishonest about our limitations, as it did for Columbus to sail thousands of miles into an unknown ocean until he found dry land. So this month we're looking at liberalism and what it means to be a liberal. So let's start by making sure that we're on the same page about what liberalism is. According to the always reliable Wikipedia, liberalism is a political and moral philosophy based on liberty and equality. 
Liberals espouse a wide variety of views, but generally support civil rights, democracy, secularism, gender equality, racial equality, internationalism, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and freedom of religion. To be a liberal, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, is to be open-minded, marked by generosity, and not bound by authoritarianism. It's also important to understand that liberalism is born out of protest. It's a reaction to some inequity or injustice. Liberal faith, no matter if it's Christian, Muslim, Jewish, is always born out of a more conservative tradition. So I believe this is why liberalism is a fit for most UUs. UUs come from a history of protest. First, the Protestant Reformation, early Unitarians were protesting against the top-town dictating of beliefs. Then later in the 1700s and early 1800s, it was Universalists rising up against the Calvinist brimstone and hellfire and preaching love and unity. So far, by this definition of liberals, it's a group I'd like to hang out with. But not everybody shares that definition. I grew up in southern Alberta, and the word liberal, whether it was lowercase l or capital L, was usually not warmly received. To be a liberal was to be seen as soft or weak or a pushover or a special snowflake. It was a label for those people who just couldn't make it in the real world. I've heard similar criticisms about being Unitarian Universalist. It's for people who have very strong beliefs about nothing. That we try to be everything to everyone and end up being nothing to anybody. In the criticism of both liberalism and Unitarianism, there's the underlying assumption that somehow these are the easier paths. In the case of our faith, I think we actually might have had a hand in feeding that assumption. As UU Minister Bill Miller puts it, Pretty bluntly, for too long, we have not taken ourselves seriously. We've offered a haven for those looking for their way out of institutionalized religion. We've demanded little and received the same. Too many of us have actually espoused the notion that one can believe anything and still be a Unitarian Universalist. We've resisted the structures imposed by form and structure and embraced a laissez-faire spirit that has commanded the respect of nearly no one. I admit, any time I hear somebody say, being a UU is great, you can believe anything you want, my blood pressure starts to rise. Being a UU does not give you the freedom to believe anything you want. Being a UU does give us the opportunity for a free search for truth, but it also demands that that search be responsible. We also assert that each one of us has a responsibility to work for a more loving and just world. That can't be done in isolation. So a me-first mindset or beliefs that diminish the rights or lives of others have no place here. So no, we can't just be anything or nothing. We cannot be passive and call ourselves Unitarian Universalists or liberals for that matter. To be a Unitarian Universalist or a liberal is to be an active participant in the world, not necessarily having the answers, but being engaged with others to search for them and being open-minded about the possibilities and answers we might find. As Reverend Scott Alexander wrote, to be a UU is to spend a lifetime seeking reality and truth and to live in this world in an ethical and principled way. There's nothing casual or easy about that. I think it should be a life's work to be receptive to what is new and at the same time hold on to what is more dear, to practice living with a loving heart and to work for justice in the creation of a better world and a beloved community. As we heard in our reading, our way in religion is not the way of ease. Charles Magistro reminded us that we are called to be sailors, for many worlds exist waiting to be discovered, and not the least of these worlds is within ourselves. It takes as much persistence, courage, and curiosity to look into our own depths 
to come to terms with the twin mysteries of being alive and having to die, to see ourselves in new and larger ways without being dishonest about our limitations, as it did for Columbus to sail thousands of miles into an unknown ocean until he found dry land. I want to be part of a group with purpose and vision who don't just settle for the easy answers or the easy way out. I want to be part of a group that sets its standards high and calls me to learn and grow and be my best. But it does sound kind of hard. So why would anybody want to spend a lifetime persisting when there are lots of sources willing and ready to give us the easy answers? Well, because the beer tastes better when the work's all done. (laughs) That's actually the title of a song by a local group called the Denim Daddies, but I think they're on to (laughs) something. Exploring options for myself and coming to my own conclusions has always made the learning more meaningful and more relevant for me. That sense of satisfaction that comes through achieving a hard-fought goal is far more exhilarating than just having something handed to you. Being engaged in the building of the world offers experiences and opportunities that passive observers never get. Feeling the solidarity as you're part of the protest makes the struggle worth it. But how we approach those protests and struggles makes all the difference. A message of protest alone is not sustaining. It becomes bitter and cynical and brittle. There must also be a message of hope, a vision of the change that we want to see. Liberalism and Unitarian Universalism must offer both a reaction to injustice and a vision of the better world it strives for. In the words of Reverend Andy Burnett from Chandler, Arizona, a lot of us were attracted to this Unitarian Universalist faith in the beginning because of what it does not have. It does not have a belief in hell or a punishing God or tests of right right belief. But if all we have to say is what we do not have. If all we can say to a world that is in need of love and healing is, at least we're not them, then we're irrelevant. That's the shadow side of a liberal faith. To help us steer around that shadow side, I think we need again to heed the call to be sailors. Not only do sailors discover new worlds, but they must weather long journeys into the unknown. Doubt, Anxiety, frustration, and loss of courage call them to turn for safety in their home port. But to persevere, the the sailors need optimism and a vision of the worlds that they are set out to discover. The UU Book Club just read the fiction novel Waiting for Columbus by Edmonton author Thomas Trofimek. And the novel has a great passage in it that's describing a time when Columbus's ships couldn't move for days on end because they were surrounded in this really deep fog. And as each day went on, the crew and the captains got more and more depressed and quit taking up their daily routines, quit basic hygiene, um, and just started to feel really um, despair and hopelessness. And so when the situation seemed to be at its most desperate, the captains from all the ships met to try to decide what they were going to do. And what they decided to do was to shave and put on their best clothes. They still didn't know what the future would hold, but they could show how they wanted to discover that future and how they wanted to live their lives on that voyage. And so their actions gave heart to their crews who saw their captain's dress and hygiene as tangible shows of hope and optimism. So liberalism and Unitarian Universalism both offer a vision and a hope and the inherent optimism needed to work towards that vision. Both have the foundational belief that although it may not be easy, we are called and have the resources we need to do the work of building a better world. They're also both grounded in the understanding that although it's very slow and slower than we'd like most of the time, the moral arc of the world always bends toward justice. Reverend Burnett offers the message of hope and encouragement this way. 
He says, it's easy to talk about what we don't believe, but I wonder if instead of talking about what we don't believe, we had a better idea of what we do believe. What if we said, we believe people are capable of finding the truth in lots of different places, so we don't impose creeds or tests of belief. We believe we have a responsibility to work for a just and loving world, so we do a lot of social justice work. And we believe that everything we need to pursue truth, to do the work, is available to us here and now, so we're optimistic things can change for the better. A Facebook meme puts the liberal version of that slightly differently. You may have seen it recently. It says, I am not a liberal snowflake. My feelings aren't fragile. My heart isn't bleeding. I am a badass believer in human rights. My toughness is in tenderness. My strength is in the service of others. There's nothing more fierce than formidable, unconditional love. There's not a thing more courageous than compassion. But if my belief in equity, empathy, goodness, and love indeed makes me a, or people like me snowflakes, then you should know winter is coming. <laughs> Whether we're sailors or snowflakes or both, may we have the courage for the journey and the sustaining knowledge that we have all that we need right here and right now to do the work of building a more loving and just world. Amen and blessed be. This reading is entitled, Who Says Unitarian Universalism's Principles Are Easy? It's by Meg Barnhouse. I have gone to a lot of church services in my time. When I was eight, trying not to wiggle in the pew, I would make check marks as the sections of the order of service finished. <laughs> Hymn number one, pastoral prayer, scripture reading, sermon. I love checking off the sermon. We colored in our bulletins and we looked through the hymnals and made ourselves giggle by adding between the sheets to their titles. A Baptist friend says she and her friends added in the bathtub. So, Turn back, O oh man, between the sheets. We three kings of Orient are in the bathtub. Years ago, I came into this Unitarian Universalist community of faith. I'm home. I listen to people talk, sometimes about liberal religion, as if it's a thin gruel, watered down to please everyone. Our seven principles, they complain, are either too much like a creed or so general as to be meaningless. My experience of the principles is that they are deeply demanding. The first one asked me to affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person, which means that I can no longer subscribe to the cheerful Calvinist doctrine of the total depravity of human nature. <laughs> Sounds grim, but really, if you are in fact starting with a totally depraved nature, the opportunities for self-congratulations abound. Hey, I didn't knock over a 7-Eleven this afternoon. Even though money's pretty tight, I'm doing well. Now I have to struggle with the worth and dignity of people who do unspeakably awful things, whereas the doctrine of total depravity made that one a no-brainer. I'm supposed to value the democratic process, hearing the voice of everyone equally, allowing everyone to have a say. The UU principles are demanding enough to make me whine. For those who feel they are thin gruel, I have a suggestion. Let's stick something onto the end of every principle that will stop people from smiling and nodding comfortably as they are read. Instead of adding in the bathtub or between the sheets, how about attaching beginning in our homes and congregations? Then we'd be faced with affirming things like the goal of peace, liberty, and justice for all, beginning in our homes and congregations. Everyone who has raised children knows that peace is often at odds with liberty and that justice demands a disturbance of the peace. To put those three together in one principle is outrageous and lovely. It's easier to think about working towards them in a global context 
than in the context of Cheerios and pajamas, car keys and cleaning up one's bedroom. Justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, beginning in our homes and congregations, is a sobering ideal. I don't know about you, but I have sat in meetings about right relations and seen people get testy with one another. Some of the nastiest behavior I've seen was long ago at a community workshop for peace activists. For me, the heart of the liberal faith is to be connected to something greater than yourself, to wallow in the spirit of life, love, and truth, to have fair trade coffee and important conversations, to stand for love, and to stand against quibbling, complaining, and flouncing off in a huff, to move toward being in right relationship with ourselves, one another, and the planet. For me, this faith isn't a thin gruel. It's not even a rich and hearty gruel. It's walnuts and bananas, mangoes, arugula, ginger, and avocado. The feast is prepared with effort, enjoyment, persistence, and commitment. Care to join me? Our closing words this morning are a Franciscan benediction. May God bless you with discomfort at the easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your hearts. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done.